Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Harakah Kadash. Double honor to the elders and apostles of great mercy and tell us the truth. Peace and blessings to the whole of the elect, to the 144,000 men pushing the truth in whole hearts and sincere across the four winds. It's Akai Kwab back in another lesson. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Rabbi Sai, Okay. This is. Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 1. Come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Sit on the ground. There is no throne, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. If you look at America, okay, nobody has beaten her, really, in war. Since she's coming to conception, America has, was, has been the power, the, 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 the go-to place throughout the whole world. The place where you can go and live the American dream. Okay? The place where you can go and make your dreams come true. You can do whatever you want in America. You can achieve with all your goals in America. It's the best place to live. If you would have four or ten years ago asked any country where they want to go, they would say America. Before they was really in Iraq and Afghanistan, before it was known, that before the, the wickedness of them had started to be uncovered, all nations wanted to run to where? To America. The food, the clothes, the style, the music, the movies. It was the go-to place. Okay? Now, when you have people thinking about America in these days, they don't want to go there. They're afraid that it's going to be, something's going to happen in America. Okay? They're afraid that, that um, if they go there, they can't get out. And I'm speaking of personal accounts of talking to people who live in these in, in this nation of people in, in, in this land in Germany. They're talking about going there, they don't want to go. So the Lord has said, Come down, sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon. Virgin daughter of Babylon is modern day America. Modern day Egypt, I mean, Egypt is modern day, uh, uh, Egypt is America today. America is modern day Egypt. America is modern day Babylon. When you look up the word Babylon, it means confusion. America is the land of confusion. The, the land of, uh, of wickedness. Verse 2, well, uh, the thing that I wanted to say is, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. The, the things that you were called before, you're not going to be called that anymore. A, a wonderful place to go, you know, a beautiful country, uh, um, has the best this, has the best that. You're not being called that anymore. Verse 2, take the millstones and grind them, uncover thy locks. Make bare the leg, uncover thy th the thigh, pass over the rivers. Verse 3, thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Yea, thy, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. The thing that I wanted to pull out of here is, thy shame shall be seen. The blood of the saints that you have shed and continually to shed. The wickedness of the lies and the deceit that you have perpetuated throughout the whole earth. Calling yourself the Most High. Painting yourself as Jesus Christ. Making the whole world believe in your doctrines and your, your philosophy. Not the Lord's. After you had your hands on the Lord's uh, uh, words. And creating the Bible destruction group in the 1600s trying to utterly destroy 
the Lord's chosen people on every side at every chance you get. All of your deceitfulness, your lies about going to space, your lies about inventing this, your lies about doing anything, it's all being uncovered. Your lies about the pharmaceutical uh, industry, your lies about the internet, your lies about everything. The whole world is seeing your shame. For at, for for as for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, is his name, the Holy One of Israel. So the Lord said he's not going to meet you as a man. So like you. Uh, let's, let's read that again. Let's read verse 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name the Holy One of Israel. Verse five, sit thou silent and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. Okay, let's look up the Chaldeans today. I wanna to see something. I, had, I hadn't planned on looking it up anyways. Okay. So like that. Okay, so it says, what, what race are Chaldeans? Okay, that's the question. Many in those regions are considered Caucasian white. Okay, Caucasian white. Chaldeans observe Roman Catholicism. Okay, all right, so it is it, it's, it's saying that the Romans, these white people, the Caucasians, white people call themselves Caucasians because why they dwelt in the Caucasus mountains. They lived in caves. If you look up caves of the Caucasus, that's what I'm going to show you. Caves of the Caucasus. All right. Those are caves in the Caucasus Mountains. Okay. Let's keep going. Look. They lived in caves. Caucasus means cave dweller. Okay. Hold on, I have more. There's a better one. Okay. You see? The Caucasus Mountains, or well, anyways the daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. You see? So America was called the Lady of Kingdoms. It was the place to be. It was the power of the whole world. All right? Verse 6, I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no, show, show them no mercy. They didn't show the children of Israel no mercy. They took and took and took and beat and raped and robbed and murdered and killed and killed and killed. And still to this day, the whole MO, they, they can't rest peacefully without knowing that they have destroyed the church of Israel. They can't rest peacefully without knowing that they have done some type of wickedness against the children of Israel. 
against the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And if you don't believe me, you can say what you want to say, but the scriptures stand. The scriptures stand. The, the Lord is saying that they have had perpetual hatred for Judah, I mean, for uh, Jacob. Okay, well, anyways. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted my inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou verily heavily laid thy yoke. You took yourself and set yourself up as the most high. You walk around the earth as if you are the most high. You have painted yourself to be in the power seat of the most high's throne. Okay? Verse 7, and thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou did not lay these things to thine heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. So you said you're gonna you're gonna reign forever. Okay? You that's why in Psalms. What does it say in Psalms? That's right here. 49 and 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. You see? Any land that you took, any land that you colonized, any land that you came in and gave democracy, you gave it a name. Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, <laughs> Nigeria, you know, <laughs> Any land that you came and took, Africa, okay, America, America Vespucci, Leo Ciprico Africanus, okay, you, you call the names, you call all the lands that you took after your own names, okay? Therefore, hear now this, thou that are given to pleasures, thou that are given to pleasures, that's America. They're used to living in pleasure. They're used to having everything that they want. Especially these white people. Especially these Edomites, man. They're used to having anything they want when they want it. Bigger and better than anybody else. You know, if you look at Texas and barbecue in Texas, hey, Esau, he show his ass in Texas, man. Everything's bigger in Texas. That's, that's just, just an example. But that 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 spirit is all over America with the Edomites, man. But now, that time is gone. America is being brought down. It's being brought low. It's being made to sit in the dust. It's being made to sit in darkness. that dwell carelessly. Uh, let me read it again. Verse 8. Therefore, hear now this that are, this thou art given unto pleasures that dwell care, dwellest carelessly that sayest in thine, I, thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I see the loss of children. So you believe that nobody can come in and take you down. Nobody going to kill your men and your children. Nobody can attack you, but you're dwelling carelessly. You know, that big bully, eventually he's going to get caught slipping by somebody big and better. Or a gang of dudes are just tired of that bully. And this is what's going to happen to America. But these two things, verse 9, but these two things shall come to thee in a moment. In one day, the loss of children and widow, widowhood, they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sorceries and thy great abundance and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. Okay? Sorceries and enchantments, that's what America is built on. Okay? That's what's fueling the wickedness of America, the occult. Sorceries and enchantments. 
the left-handed side power. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Thou hast said, none seeth me. Thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it hath perverted thee. The wisdom and knowledge that you have from the Babylonian times, from the Egyptian times, from the Assyrian times, are all of those, those uh, 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 rituals and, and uh, sacrifices and uh, tactics, and I can't think of the word, but all of those things that you've learned from studying all of these past kingdoms that you use still to this day, these satanic rituals, you know, these sorceries that you, you, you practice in the dark, that you say, say no one sees, okay? That, that knowledge have perverted thee. Thou hast said in thine heart, I am, and there is and none else beside me. Verse 11, therefore shall evil come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it is risen, riseth, and mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Okay? So all of these things are going to come unto you. All of these things are going to come unto you. And you're not going to be able to stand. You're not going to be able to get away from it. Verse 12. Stand now with thine enchantments and with thy multitude of sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If it so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. You can't, but you won't be able to. Verse 13, thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, and the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, verse 14, they shall be a stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm them, nor fire to sit before. You see? So, thermonuclear war is going to burn America. Missiles are going to hit America like never before seen. All right? Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. You see, all the countries that you were confederate with, none shall save thee. All right? So this, 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 is, this is just a, a smidgen, a scratch on the surface of the things that are, are destined to come upon you. Let's go to Joel chapter 1. In verse 15. Alas, for the day of the Lord is at hand, and as destruction from the Almighty shall it come. And it's going to come to America first. And not even the first, but it's, it's going to be uh, uh, greatly seen in America. America is modern-day Babylon, modern-day Egypt, modern-day Sodom and Gomorrah, all balled up into one. Okay, they practice all of these, these, these customs from each of these kingdoms. Okay? This is uh, Joel chapter 2 and 2. A day of darkness. And of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong and a strong, there hath never, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Okay, so that day is gonna be insanely un unspeakable. Okay, and this is talking about the missiles. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, 
and behind them a desolate wilderness, yeah, and nothing shall escape them. You see, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. This is talking about those thermonuclear missiles that are going to hit. That's going to catch a lot of people off guard. Okay? It's going to catch a lot of people off guard. And what's going to happen is destruction. America is destined for uh, uh, desolation. It's destined for widowhood. It's destined for uh, judgment. Okay? Let's go to Isaiah. Chapter 13. Verse 6. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand, it shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. There shall, therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pains and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy it. Destroy the sinners, therefore, out of it. You see? For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in its going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man, than the golden wedge of Ophir, Ephra. Verse 13, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. Okay, so destruction is coming. But the, the, let the Christians tell you when the Lord comes, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be peace, love and, and unity, you know. I, I had planned on doing something else. But when I hit Isaiah 47, I just felt like that's what I was supposed to be talking about today, this morning. Let's go to Amos chapter 5. And verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what is end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. And as a a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house, and leaned his hand upon the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness, and not light, even very dark, and no brightness in it? You see? So the day of the Lord is going to be completely, utterly destruction, utter destruction. So what manner of man should, should we be? Knowing that these things are coming. Not as these Christians who live carelessly. Not as these, these, these people who, who call him Christ. You know, calling him Christ. You know, and, and Yeshua thinking that everything is fine. Everything is peachy. You know, if I just have faith in him. No, no not even that. They don't even say that. They say, um, the Christians and the, and the Catholics say that they're covered by grace, okay? They're covered by grace, yet they don't show any works, all right? So it's, it just shows you that there's a confusion in this world, for one, and for two, a lot of people are gonna get caught up in it. A lot of people are gonna get caught off guard on the day of the Lord, when he returns. This is Luke chapter 17.
17 and verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Verse 27, they did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the, until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Verse 28, likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they brought, they sold, they planted, they built it. It's the same thing. It's going to be the same exact way here. Okay? But the same day that Lot went out of Samar, Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them, them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Okay? It's going to catch a lot of people off guard. It's going to catch a lot of people lacking. All right? A lot of people ain't going to expect this because they're not looking. They don't have the eyes to see. They think that everything is good. All right? They think that what, what they've been taught by their pastors, that Jesus is going to hook you up. Okay? He going to do it again. He got something for you. Just hold on. He do got something for you. He got judgment for you. And he's going to judge you cruel without mercy. Okay? This is... Uh, that's First Peter. Go to Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness but is long suffering to to usward not willing that any man should perish but that that all should come to repentance verse 10 but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up Verse 11, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons are ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Most High, wherein the heaven shall be on fire, being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Okay, so <laughs> it explains it all right there. It explains it in thoroughly. So the day of the Lord is going to catch many off guard. It's going to catch many, especially in America. In America, because they're mocking and scoffing. They're laughing. They're going to laugh and do the same things all the way up until the end. This is the last precept. This is Luke chapter 12 and verse 39. And this is in red. Uh, and this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and have not suffered his house to be broken into, been broken through. Okay? But ye, be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Okay? It's, it's simple. The Son of Man coming at an hour when you think not. Okay? All right? So, be ye... Let me read it again. Let me read it one more time so I can make it clear. Uh, this is Luke chapter 12 and verse 39. And this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour... The thief would come, he would have watched and have not suffered his house to be broken through. So if if we all knew, if Jake gonna wait until the last minute and then try to play like they've been watching the whole time. You know? That's that's how men are. But the Lord says, Be ye therefore ready also, 
for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Salaki, the Lord's going to come at an hour when you don't expect it. So with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Arakakadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of great mercy on the promise of truth, peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the 144,000 men pushing the truth in wholehearted, sincerely, across the four winds. Until next time, Shalom.